Um, hey, students. So I just wanted to create a quick video to show you all how to run the analysis that you need to run in, a, in SPSS. So I'm going to open up SPSS, um, the, the analysis that you need for your final paper. So I'm going to open up SPSS. I'm going to show you all the procedures that you need to do and, and you need to perform in order to do everything necessary for your final paper. So what you're going to do, obviously, you need to access the general social survey data set. And what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to, well, you need a couple things. First thing you need is you need frequency tables for both variables and you need charts and graphs for both variables. You also need the measures of central tendency and the measures of dispersion for both variables. So I'm going to show you how to calculate those right now. So what you would do is you would come over here and you click analyze. You'd come over here to descriptive statistics, and then you're going to click frequencies. Okay, now I'm going to right click to display the variable names, and I'm just going to run uh, it for the variable degree. And then I think that that might influence, you know, how people vote in the 2016 presidential election. So I have my two variables. So I'm saying my independent variable is degree. My dependent variable is how people voted in the 2016 election. Of course, with the assumption that more educated people are more likely to vote Democratic than uh, people who are, you know, voting Republican. Okay. So now that I have these two in here, what I'm going to do is I also need to calculate the measures of central tendency. Now, degree is ordinal and press 16 is nominal. How do I know that? Well, see, if I see these bars, so a blue, greenish, yellow, and red bar, that's telling me that it's ordinal level data. Now, if I see this red, blue, and greenish, yellow circle, that's telling me that it's nominal data. Another way that I, I know that is if I just kind of scroll over, let's just say this one has bars, it says measure is ordinal. And then if I scroll over Bible, it says measure nominal. And then if you see age, it's telling me that the measure is scale. So you see a ruler that says the measure is scale. That tells me that it's interval ratio level data. Okay, so I'm gonna click analyze. I'm gonna go back to where we just were. I'm gonna put degree and I'm going to put press 16 in here. Okay, now since I know that I have both nominal and ordinal level data, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click statistics. And I'm going to click on, for nominal level data, what you'd prefer to calculate is mode as your measure of central tendency. And then IQV as your measure of dispersion. SPSS doesn't calculate IQV. So when you're doing that for your final paper, you actually need to hand calculate it. Look it up in chapter four and it'll show you how to hand calculate the IQV or the index of qualitative variation. Now for ordinal level data, you need median, mode, and um, you can calculate range. Um, so that's what you prefer for ordinal level data. Um, now, if you have interval ratio level data, you can calculate mean, standard deviation, and variance. But we don't have that. So I'm just going to calculate median, mode, and then range. And I can just throw in the minimum and maximum if I want to. And then I press continue. And then what I also need, in, in addition to the frequency tables, the measure of the central tendency, and the measure of dispersion, I also need charts and graphs. Well, how do I create those? Well, I'm gonna come over here right below this. I'm gonna click charts. And I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna create a bar charts. You can create pie charts if you want to. Um, but for because we have nominal and ordinal level data, we don't wanna create a histogram because a histogram is for interval ratio level data. So if you have a hit interval ratio level data, you can just go ahead and click, click on the histogram. So now that we have bar charts, I want to have percentages displayed instead of frequencies. Percentages are better because it makes it easier um, to display the information and to compare the different categories of the independent variable. So I'm going to press continue and I'm going to press OK. Now, in my output, so this is the output window, it has median, mode, range, minimum, maximum. Okay. Like I said, for the nominal variable, you need IQV, you're going to have to can calculate that. We have the frequency table for, for a degree, frequency table for you know, how people voted in the 2016 election. We have the graph for both of those variables as well. So we have quite a bit of the, the information that we need for the final paper. Now, what else do we need for our final paper? Now, what we also need is cross tabs. We need um, chi-square, and then we need to calculate the measure of association. 
Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to go back and we're going to click analyze. We're going to come back to descriptive statistics and then we're going to click on cross tabs. Now, if your data is interval ratio, you typically don't want to do cross tab or chi square. So, what you prefer to do if you have interval ratio level data is just recode the variable. I have a video that shows you how to recode variables. So let's just say you have age, which is interval ratio. You want to just go ahead and convert it to an ordinal level variable. So just recode it to ordinal. And I have a video that shows you how to do that. Um, so I'm going to right click this variable name. So I need to find those two variables again. So my independent variable was degree. Since it's independent, we, we're going to put it in the column. We want the, our independent variable to go in the columns. And then our dependent variable is Pres 16, so we want to put that into the rows. Now, when we calculate the percentages for the cross tab, we always want to calculate the percentages vertically or for the independent variable, because the independent variable is typically going to go in the columns. So we're going to press on cells, and we're going to press column. When we see those percentages, we want to press columns. Don't press rows, because like I said, then you're what you're doing is you're reversing the analysis, and you don't want to do that. Okay? The only time you want to click, click rows is if you uh, put the independent variable in the rows, and typically you just don't want to do that. So I'm going to press continue. Okay, now the last thing I need to do is I need to calculate chi-square and then the measures of association. So how do I do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the statistics and we'll press statistics. So I'm going to press chi-square. Now, if I have two ordinal level variables, I'm going to click gamma but I don't have two ordinal level variables. Okay, I have, as we discussed already, PRES16 is nominal. Um, so I'm going to click um, either Lambda or Kramer's V. Hold on for a second. Okay, now, which I think brings us to something actually kind of important. I figure I might as well tell you all is that if you have a variable, a nominal variable where there's only two options, which means it's dichotomous. So in this situation, the two options are Clinton and Trump, or let's just say, you know, the, the two options are what, what is your sex, you know, and there's just male and female, or the question is, you know, have you ever used drugs? And then there's just two options, yes or no. Well, then that's a dichotomous nominal variable. And for a dichotomous nominal variable, you could treat, treat that as ordinal for the purpose of calculating gamma. So in this situation, even though we do have a nominal variable, we typically wouldn't want to calculate gamma with a nominal variable. We can calculate it because it's dichotomous, which means there's only two options, there's only two categories. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to press cross tab. I need to redo all that stuff. So I'm going to find degree, put in the columns, press 16, put in the rows, cells. I'm going to calculate the columns. Or press statistics and we'll calculate chi score. And, and in this situation, I'm going to click gamma. Now, in every other situation, I would click phi and Kramer's V and lambda. So when we go over to chapter 10 and we discuss um, the measures of association, which these are, then you'll understand why you would use phi and lambda and why you would use gamma. But just understand right now that you're going to use gamma, if you have two ordinal variables or an ordinal and a dichotomous nominal or two dichotomous nominal variables. Every other situation, let's just say you have two nominal variables, then you're going to use phi and Kramer's Z and lambda. Or if you have a nominal variable and an ordinal variable, then you're going to use phi and Kramer's Z and lambda again. But we have a situation where luckily we're going to be able to use gamma. Gamma is better than lambda and phi Kramer's Z. So if you can use gamma, use it but sometimes you can't use gamma, okay? So, and you can't use it if you have a nominal variable and that nominal variable isn't dichotomous. So I'm gonna press continue and I'm gonna press okay. Now, um, you don't really need the case processing summary, but what you do need is the cross tab. So you have independent variable in the column, dependent variable in the rows, and you wanna see if there's an association between you know, whether or not people education influences whether or not they're voting for Trump or uh, Clinton. Okay, having said that, we can look at the chi-square and then based on the chi-square, we can determine whether or not it's significant. So there's two ways to do this. You can look at the degrees of the freedom and then you can go into the chi-square distribution in the back of the book to determine whether or not it's statistically significant in this, and what we mean by that, can you reject or fail to reject? Or you can look at the significance levels and this tells us that the p-value for this test is 
0.016, which is below 0 0.05, but is not below 0 0.01. So you can reject it to 0 0.05, but not the 0 0.01 or the 0 0.001 alpha level. Um, and then the gamma tells you the strength of the association. Okay, so gamma, the lambda and Kramer's V, it'll tell you how well these two variables are correlated with one another, okay? So what you do is you take these pieces of information and this is what you need for your final paper. Um, some of the stuff you don't need, like the case processing summary and stuff like that, but everything else, go ahead and include that. And that's how you run the analysis for your final paper. <laughs>